We have an actual on ice hockey game to talk about today. It's rookie camp, but it still counts. Uh, we're going to break down the takeaways from the Predators' first two rookie showcase games. Uh, Yaroslav Askarov looking every bit like a star. Uh, a couple familiar names coming up with big performances. And one guy we really haven't talked a lot about that not only has become an interesting prospect, Maybe a wild card to make the Predators this season. Mm, interesting topic of uh, conversation coming up today on the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Lockdown Predators your first listen of the day every single day. We're kind of in season. We're back to doing podcasts five days a week. So from here on out, from now until the season ends, you got us every Monday through Friday. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a Swedish-loving partner in crime. <laughs> You do. <laughs> I am Ann Kimmel. I am a writer and editor at InsideThePreds.com. And I do, I love, I love my Frederick the Swede. Not even going to bring <laughs> up the, the 15 minute conversation that happened before the show. Uh, you're, you're just all going to have to trust us on this. Trust, uh, trust me. Yeah. Speak it. We hope you have enough trust in us uh, at this point already because we got takes on the Predators' first couple of rookie showcase games, uh, they they played two already. They got one more coming up today against the Florida Panthers. Um, and yeah, this is this is kind of the first on ice actual game action we have from any sort of Nashville Predators related um, roster contingent this year. Uh, so first off, and it's great to actually be talking about like an actual hockey game. Uh, you know, it feels like there's only so many times you can do like, Hey, how was this guy's season last year? What can we expect from him? Where do they fit in? Um, it, so it's good to actually like watch a game, get back here and be like, all right, here's what I saw. Here's what I liked. It felt so good. Oh my gosh, there is nothing better than getting back to hockey after the off season. And even though, you know, like you said, this is rookie camp prospect showcase, it really is so fun to see these younger players, these players coming up through the system and to be able to see their development and see what they're able to do, see them in competitive situations, you know, and, and there are several prospects that just generate a lot of buzz for Nashville Predators fans. So it's really kind of fun to get to see them. And like you said, also, there's a couple that maybe people aren't talking about that really have done a good job in this showcase making a little name for themselves. So, so happy that hockey is back. So ready. So yeah. ready for hockey. Yeah, we're going to get to some of those surprises uh, in just a little bit. But first off, um, you know, we, we look at the first two games. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of headlines, guys that we've been talking about. My first big takeaway, Anne, Yaroslav Askarov. Oh. This guy is as advertised. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, he, he got the start against Tampa uh, the first game. And I, I'll tell you like every bit as advertised. Now that was the big concern. Remember you and I mm -hmm. talked about this last week. It was going to be, you know, how's he going to be when the actual game start? Is he going to be sharp or is he going to look a little bit rusty? Because, right. you know, obviously he didn't play a lot last year. You went to a uh, development camp, you know, a couple of months ago mm -hmm. and, you know, you, you notice that, you know, Askarov looked very sharp, but at other times it looked like there were kind of plays where it's like, oh, that's a little bit rusty or, oh, had, yeah. he had a little bit more experience over the past couple of years. That's not sort of a play he would make. But, you know, I, I would say like I've been impressed with what I saw from Askarov that first game. What, what are your thoughts on what you've seen so far? Yeah, I would agree with your assessment, you know, came into development camp. And this is a player who just has not seen a lot of game time um, play for the last season or so, but he really, you know, in talking with him, he really spent the time between development camp and rookie camp 
doing the work. Like he's been on the ice, he's working out, he's getting back in the groove. And man, you watched him in the first game against the Tampa Bay Lightning prospects. And, you know, he has done nothing except continue to build the expectations around him. And you get, you know, I get a little nervous about that um, for him in the sense that, you know, you kind of have to temper expectations, especially for prospects, because, you know, I think we saw the same thing when you talk about Ellie Tolvanen, you know, Ellie Tolvanen comes in with this huge, you know, expectation and, and, you know, it's not a linear path to success in the NHL, but holy Russian goaltender Batman. <laughs> I mean, Askarov in this game, he just showed why he just continues to generate interest, excitement, and buzz. Oh my goodness. Yaroslav. You yep. go, girl. <laughs> you you go, Glenn Coco. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but that that's kind of the big thing that we wanted to see from Askarov was how mm-hmm. does he in these early games you know this is kind of going to be like a shake off the rust kind of thing and that that was something that we've seen from him this mm-hmm. summer you know he was able to kind of shake off some of his rust in those early couple of days of development camp he's obviously this time had a very strong rookie camp and a very strong first start i would assume he would probably get the start today uh I hope. prospect goes i mean unless there's there's one more goalie um, mm-hmm. On the roster, which is Braden Holt, not mm-hmm. Braden Holt B, just Braden Holt, different uh, guy, different guy. Um, you know, in, in but he's he's a non-roster invitee, and I would think you would want either Askarov, probably I mean probably Askarov to get as much ice time as possible. Um, yes, maybe a split with him and Carl Vermachka, but yeah, I, I mean I'm very curious to see how he finishes this if he can kind of repeat that performance he had. Uh, a couple nights ago and come on strong. Yeah. I would love to see him in, in the game again today. I really would. I think everybody would like to get another look at him. You know, he was kind of a controversial pick for Nashville. There were some people in Nashville that were like, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Watch him play the Tampa Bay prospect game. That's why the Predators did it. Like he really is something special. And, you know, he's got, lots of growth that he needs to, you know, obviously go through. He needs to spend some time developing some things. You know, you hear criticism like, oh, he's so, um, you know, he's just so reliant on his glove hand. Look, I don't care if he saves pucks with his armpit. Like, who cares? Keep the puck out of the net. Literally don't care what part of his body he saves the puck with. This kid is something. He really is. And here's the thing about Askarov that – makes him he's he really is going to be a fan favorite it's not just his performance on ice he is so delightfully engaging and he is so happy to be here in nashville um and building these relationships with the other players um was talking with um luke prokop and spencer stasney one of the days after um rookie camp and asked them just about Askarov. And so I want to show a real quick clip of them, but just watch their faces when they are asked about Yaroslav Askarov. It's just darling. So you have Askarov behind you. <laughs> yeah, he'll be fun. He's a great guy. Played with him a little bit in Milwaukee at the end there, but obviously he's great and it'll be fun to watch him. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I've gotten to know him you know, quite well over this these couple of days that I've been here. Um, he's a really funny guy, a character off the ice. And, um, it's, his personality shows on the ice as well, so um, I know whenever I make a mistake, that guy's there to pack me up. And, uh, lucky to have him between the pipes. Yeah, like, they love him on the ice, but these players love this guy off the ice. And I'm telling you, Nashville is going to love him the more they're exposed to him. Yeah, for sure. And you want a guy, and we talked about this a little bit last week, you want to play with guys that you like playing with. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. it's like in in a job, like if you had a job, mm-hmm. you would want to work with coworkers you like working with. So that's a big thing that he's just such a likable guy that he's got this big thing, especially the defensive core. I mean, the two defensive mm-hmm. people we've heard from right there, Yep. Um, those are guys that – like are going to probably be playing in front of Yaroslav Askarov at some point in their career. So you love to see that kind of rapport 
building early. And uh, I, I share um, I share the enthusiasm. I share love the, him. Um, I'm excited to see what uh, what Askaroff can do there. A mm-hmm. um, little bit more in co- talking about here in just a little bit. Uh, a couple of surprises this tournament. One uh, was a big rebound from kind of a mediocre season last year. The other is someone I don't think whose name we mentioned a whole lot, but it's kind of maybe finding his way into contention for not just a team spot, but a Predators roster spot maybe at some point this season. That's going to be an interesting conversation, but first I want to mention today's show brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. You can find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this week's opening week games. BetOnline is also your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, everything from live betting, esports, and scores. Uh, they just put out a bunch of futures for this year's NHL season. So, hey, if you want to bet on uh, who you think is going to win the Stanley Cup, who's going to win the Central Division, stuff like that, head over to the website today. Uh, that's not just hockey or football. They got everything on any other sport. NBA kicking back off, Major League Baseball in full swing, MMA, boxing, golf, soccer, anything you can imagine. Bet online has got you covered. So head to the website today. Or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, and so we are talking a Predators rookie camp. Um, a big standout to me. Mm-hmm. This is somebody that we have talked a lot about over the past couple of, um, over the past couple of years, and talked a little bit about last week as well. Igor Afanasyev. Yes. Egoat. Egoat. Yeah, this is this is a guy who has really stood out to me in a positive way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really again, this is another player that I think people in Nashville really like. I think he comes into this um, this preseason, this rookie camp with some expectation, because if you remember last year, there was a lot of people that were like, hey, this is going to be Igor year to crack the roster he almost did too he almost yeah like there was i mean he was here all the way through training camp kind of what's gonna happen uh and and did a really great job impressing the coaching staff kind of struggled a little bit at times in milwaukee last season didn't see any ice time here in nashville but Igor is really very determined to do what he needs to do to make an impression in Nashville. Um, and he has performed really well in this <clears throat> prospect showcase and in through rookie camp. Now, it'll be very interesting to see. Again, we talked about this, too. You know, you take these rookies and they look great. Now let's put them in training camp with the veterans. And then you kind of have a, a little bit better comparison. But Igor has been really focused on what he thinks the Nashville Predators want to see from him. You know, he when asked, you know, hey, like, what are you working on in your game? His thing is, you know, physicality, dominating on the ice, being that physical presence, being able to win uh, puck battles, being able to kind of use my size on the ice. It's that whole playing predator style of hockey. And so you saw some of that also offensively. You know, he's had, what, uh, one goal in the first game, two goals in the second game. Like, yeah. you know, really, he's he's having a really great prospect showcase. It's, it's so weird, though. Like, it feels like this preseason is so different compared to last preseason. Because last preseason was the, like, competitive retooling preseason, where yeah. it felt like, any rookie could get a chance. Yeah. You know, but then this year you've got, um, they brought in Ryan McDonough. They brought in Nino Niederreiter. There's just not as many openings. And so it just feels a little bit different. So it'll be interesting to see players like Igor in training camp. Like, is there really an opportunity? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, and that's the thing. I think like, you know, if we were in a situation like we were last year, we'd be talking about, Maybe Luke Evangelista being able to fight right. for the spot. Now, obviously, he's only played one game of the rookie showcase, mm-hmm. but the first game. Um, but, you know, we're kind of excited to see maybe the training wheels off of him a little bit today. Um, you know, but we'll be talking about that. But for Igor, 
-hmm. you know, after the season he had in Milwaukee last year, where he just kind of, it seems like lost his confidence a little bit. Um, wasn't exactly playing the way Carl Taylor wanted him to play. His offense struggled as a result and, you know, wound up being, you know, kind of left on the bench a lot towards the end of last year. So, you know, really, I think we came in here sort of overlooking him. Like, obviously, everybody right. loves the ego. We hear about the ego chat on Twitter all the time with some of the Preds faithful. Um, you know, I think from that regard, everybody was kind of looking at him. But it seems like there's been prospects that have sort of passed him in yeah. terms of, you know, this this is a guy we're excited to see maybe fight for the roster spot or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he has fought his way back into that conversation. He's looked strong uh, in all in both sort of prospect rookie camps this offseason. Yes. Uh, he's had a very, very good first couple of games, not only, of course, three goals in two games, um, but he's very engaged on the ice. He's forechecking hard. Um, he's kind of in everybody's face trying to make mistakes, kind of like almost Ryan Johansson ish a little bit in the way. Yes, he, they play, you know, obviously different positions, but it's that same kind of, you know, use your length, use your like physicality to kind of mm -hmm. disrupt plays. You know, I get that sort of vibe for him. Obviously, I think he's unlike last year, there's probably not a chance for him to make the team, but mm -hmm. You know, he plays as well as he does. He carries that confidence and, you know, he's gets hot in Milwaukee to start the year. Yeah. Maybe, maybe December, January comes around. Preds get the injury bug and Afanasiev is one of the first people they call up. Yeah. It would be very interesting to see him. And like I said, again, super interested to see him in training camp with the veterans, because that is such a helpful gauge of where is their game compared to where it needs to be to be NHL ready. So I, it's going to be really interesting over this next week or so in preseason to see Afanasiev in that, you know, see how that kind of translates against, against the veterans, but yeah. And then, and honestly, Igor is another one who is super endearing, who has that personality that you don't often get from hockey players. So, you know, it's hard not to root for him. It's hard not to root for Igor. But yeah, we'll see. He's he's done a great job in these prospect games. So let's see what he does when it comes time for training camp. Yeah. Um, another guy. This is a guy that none of us have been uh, talking much about. Mm -hmm. Signed in the offseason very quietly because, you know, in, in our defense, there was a lot happening this offseason. Marcus Nurmi. Oh, my gosh. Where did this guy come from? <laughs> I know. He is. He's a whole thing. He is a whole thing. Now, look, he's he's an overager, 24 years old, mm -hmm. um, coming in here, his first uh, his first, you know, taste of North American action. Um, but this is a guy and like I'm watching him and it's like, how is no team like mm -hmm. put him on their radar yet? Like this is a guy whose skills, like his skill set seems NHL ready, like in some role. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting is when you look at these prospect games, one of the lines that has been very successful is Afanasiev, Yusuf Parsonin, and Marcus Nurmi. And in okay. my mind, yeah, there's a lot of hockey to love there. There's a lot of hockey player to love there. <laughs> but in my mind, it was kind of like, okay, I'm going to watch Igor. I'm going to keep my eye on you. So Parson, because I'm a huge fan of his, but this Marcus Nurmi is like, Hey, I'm over here and y'all are going to watch. He really has come on and been so successful, very physical player. Um, very, uh, like he's very good at kind of anticipating what he needs to do to either interrupt a play or to get something going. I agree with you. Marcus Nurmi is, this is a name that we have not heard that people need to pay attention to. Um, he played over in Finland with um, Yuso Parsonen. So, you know, that obviously helps, but everybody has kind of overlooked this this guy and he's going to be somebody i cannot wait to see back on the ice love this guy yeah he was a, a late round draft pick of the ottawa senators back in 2016 but never brought over to north america 
Uh, Senators decided not to sign him. He's been in La Liga for for seven years now Mm -hmm. um, and uh, had his career best season last year, which ended with uh, 19 points and 18 playoff games for TBS. Um, So that is somebody that I think is kind of waiting to break through. But, you know, I watch him and I watch him with that line and and it's I, I don't have like a good comparison for him. Mm-hmm. really because it's like you know at first like you know the way he's like kind of moving through the ice and kind of you know being like the guy that sets up the plays it's like the the style of play was a little bit like maybe like you know a low end like Henrik Zetterberg now of course mm-hmm. that comparison hits different uh when you're talking about him playing in the NHL versus him playing in rookie camp but I got that same sort of role you know that's like that kind of you know, the playmaker guy, make all these plays to attract everybody for you and then set them up. Um, mm-hmm. That was kind of like the play I got from, uh, you know, when uh, Afanasiev scored his first goal. Um, it was either, yes, like it was either against Carolina or Tampa Bay, and I can't remember which one, but I remember him mm-hmm. just making like his unbelievable play that felt like a slam dunk goal. Um, yes. And he, of course, made the play that set up Yuso Parson in to tie the game against Carolina late. So I, I watch him and it's just like the first thing that stands out is his hockey IQ. Yes. Like this is this is a guy that's, you know, supposed to be unfamiliar with like the North American game or has been stuck in Europe for all these years. And this guy's I, I'm telling you, Ann, like the mix of his hockey IQ, the way he's seeing the ice, um, the yep. way he's kind of dictating the way the flow of the play goes. Combined with his size, combined with his skating, there's a lot to like about him. And you know, mm-hmm. there is he is six foot five. The Predators are looking for maybe a little bit more offensive pop in the bottom half of their lineup. I mean, I mean, like, is it not out of the question that he is contending for a roster spot? If if not out of like, is he like one of the last couple cuts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I would not be surprised. I think a lot of people in Nashville would be just because of just the familiarity with his game. I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. And again, like you said, you know, he is David Poyle size. David Poyle loves him big. Um, But his skill set, you know, this is not just a I'm big, you know, you should think about me for the fourth line. His skill set is really, really well-rounded, really like this guy. And I agree with you. I, I, I want to see him stick around um, training camp a while. I, I'd be very curious to see how he does. There are a couple defensemen that I wanted to talk about, about how they've been doing. Uh, and one of the players that you mentioned, we just got a really quick glimpse of. So I want to talk about him too. But first, want to thank you for making Locked on Predators your first listen every day. That's right. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, we're back can't get rid of us. Coming up this week, we are going to have some crossover episodes with our Central Division friends slash rivals on their Locked On teams. So we're going to talk with them about what their offseason team moves look like, how they see their team matching up, and what we can expect from a matchup with the Nashville Predators. Also, training camp starts. Going to be talking about training camp this week as well. If you are done listening with us and you're like, man, still would like to talk hockey, go make Locked on NHL your second listen of the day. This is a 30-minute daily podcast on all things NHL from all the teams across the league. If you have questions about how some teams in the Atlantic Division are going to do, you need to check out Locked on NHL. They have everything you want to know about hockey. Locked on NHL is your daily podcast. 30-minute NHL podcast. Uh, yeah, a couple of defensemen to talk about, Ann, uh, because we know that was kind of a big thing going into the yeah. season. Um, Spencer Stassi <laughs> is a guy that I think has really stood out mm-hmm. to me during this, this entire process of rookie camp. Um, you know, obviously he came in and he's kind of been, I would say, if, if not uh, – if not the number one defenseman, certainly in the top four for this camp. Uh, He's had pretty good chemistry with Mark Del Geizo. And that is, that may be your Milwaukee, one of your top two pairings in Milwaukee too. So that's got to be something encouraging for Preds fans too, as well. And yeah. And I think watching these defensemen at rookie camp and again, watching them in this showcase really is very encouraging when you look at, 
Milwaukee and you look at what's coming down the pipeline for Nashville Predators, I think Spencer Stastny is a great player, very smart very responsible, um, good read of what's going on. Um, maybe not super flashy, but I don't necessarily think that he needs to be. I think he's very responsible. And of course, another one that we've kind of talk, talked about some is Luke Prokop. Um, he has really matured his game, um, just everything, his confidence. He's really matured over the this last season. And of course, he had a really long hockey season with the Edmonton Oil Kings. They you know, won their um, WHL championship and went on to the Memorial Cup. So, you know, this is somebody who played a lot, a lot of hockey. So I think that really benefited him in his season. But he comes in here. Um, I really like his game. It's it's hard for me. Like when I was watching the other day, the second game, and he was in the game, there's such a part of me that wants him to jump into the play. And he is such a stay-at-home defenseman. <laughs> so I find myself like, go, go. Go, you know, and, and that's just, you know, right now, that's just not where the role that he was playing in this showcase. Um, but I really like him. Like he he's, um, again, super responsible defenseman. I'll be interested to see what other aspects of his game kind of develop over the course of his time. And he's somebody who, in theory, could go back to juniors for one more year or could be in Milwaukee. I'll be honest with you. I just don't see what he would gain from going back to juniors. I think he is extremely AHL ready. So I mean, yeah. that's a player to keep your eye on. Yeah. The only, the only way I would say he goes back to juniors, if, if for some reason the Preds weren't impressed with them um, this camp, but as you mentioned, he really doesn't, hasn't done anything to be like, Oh yeah, he's not ready. Um, no. I, I agree with him or you saying, you know, I wish he would jump into the play a little bit more, especially because it felt like he really started, honing his offensive skills towards the end of last year as the yeah. season went on, you know, kind of developed a little bit more of a two-way threat to his game, you know, so I would have loved to see him maybe dive in, take some chances like that. But, you know, you know, as it's, you know, pro cops, obviously an interesting story a little bit because it felt like, you know, before last season, it felt like he had kind of been passed on the prospect depth chart by guys like Adam Willsby or, mm -hmm. or you know, Mark Del Geizo. Um, but, you know, the, the way he played last year and, and kind of his breakthrough season really feels like he's back in the conversation, maybe having, you know, is, is possibly getting, you know, more more mm -hmm. chances to kind of be the guy, maybe a breakthrough candidate for Nashville, um, you know, so but it's I, I'm encouraged mm -hmm. I'm encouraged by what I've seen so far. But but I agree. I feel like there's a couple more things that he can work on to definitely round out his game and kind of be a complete defenseman. Uh, so so yeah. we'll definitely see on that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Adam Willsby is another one that I think there's been a little bit of rumbling about. I really liked his game in the prospect showcase. He does, he's not somebody that you're going to be like, wow, you know, but he does a lot of little things very well. Um, so this is another one that I'm like, I'm like, okay, I see you. I see you, Adam Willsby. I yeah. like that one. Uh, yep. Last quick shout out, uh, Zachary Lahiru. Come on. Um, that's another very small thing. Of course, he's not like, you know, doing a whole lot on the scoreboard, although he does have, you know, a goal so far. Um, I, I really, I really like his game. And I think you're starting to see in these, in these rookie games, kind of what you're going to get uh, from Zachary Lahiru, which is, you know, a very nose to the grindstone kind of pest kind of player. Oh gosh. Like yeah. complete complete with like the the Billy from Stranger Things haircut that he's got going on. Mm -hmm. uh, like this is this is a guy that I really have liked watching. And again, um I I, I haven't seen anything that's gonna be like, oh yeah, he's like a future like top line player in the NHL at least not just yet but right. at the very least he is he has been a fun player uh, to watch to get to know uh, the way he is just always up in everybody's faces the way he you can clearly see him getting other people's skin um, great four checker you know if nothing else mm -hmm. the Predators have a pretty good you know third line guy on their hands like somebody that can mm -hmm. kind of just annoy people and cause enough chaos to kind of change the game yes. um, a little bit like Joel Ward, you know, from, from the first couple of years he was here in Nashville, obviously mm -hmm. I think 
but Hero's got a little bit more of a like a bad boy punchy streak to him. Yes, or did, but it's that, it's that same kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he reminds me a lot of like an extra irritating Ryan Johansson. Like a very immature Ryan Johansson. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just that, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do that thing. He's very much like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you with this finger right by your face. Like that is Zach Zachary LaRue on the ice. Like that's just his vibe. It worries me a little bit. I will say this, going into this rookie camp, I really wanted to watch him because, you know, this is a kid who has a lot of penalty minutes. This is a young man who has had some suspensions for his play. And I think we can all agree that we have a penalty hangover from last season when it comes to the Nashville Predators. And so it's like you kind of want to see him keep that edge, but like maybe simmer down the you know, just kind of how far he takes it. But again, this is a young player and he, he really just has one gear and it is just bat poop crazy on the ice. So super fun to watch and a ton of personality. You know, I look at the, you know, I look at these young men at the, this rookie camp and, you know, people joke about, you know, ah, hockey players just don't really have a lot of personality. And, you know, all of that aside, there's some really fun watches on and off the ice coming up through the pre Predators development system. So it just makes it extra fun to kind of keep an eye on these young guys. Yeah, uh, there's definitely a lot to watch out for. And again, Predators have one more game mm -hmm. left in the rookie showcase. They play the Florida Panthers babies today in uh, North Carolina. So excited to see how that goes. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to be welcoming special guest Robin Leano from Locked on Coyotes. Uh, excited to talk to her. And I'm going to ask her why the Coyotes keep ruining all of Nashville's good time. Uh, Seriously, you know, so they bitter. We can just, you know, go down for nothing and lay back. They Stay have, they there. Have they just, yeah. Very, Awful very game. Worst game. Thank, thanks, Arizona. Um, yeah, yeah. So until so we'll have that. Uh, Ann and I will be back uh, together on Wednesday uh, for a recap of Rookie Showcase and also look to training camp because um, that is right around the corner as well. So excited to see um, how that shakes out. In the meantime, Ann, where can the people find your work? You can find my work at InsideThePreds.com, and you can find me on Twitter at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. I'm Nick Morgan. You can find me at Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. Read my work at OnTheForeCheck.com. Uh, while you're on Twitter, be sure to follow the show at LO underscore Predators. Tweet us your thoughts on uh, Rookie Camp and if there's anything you'd like to see. If you're on YouTube, like the video, subscribe, leave a comment. Comment uh, so other Preds fans can find this. That's going to do it for us today on the Locked on Preds podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We'll be back tomorrow with an all-new episode. See you then.